Hey what's up guys, back again with another video in this Spigot series. I know it's been a little while since I've recorded an episode in this series, but I want to get back into showing you guys how to use the Spigot API and because it's just fun, right? So yeah, um, the first thing I want to show you now that I'm back is how to make custom events because um, I found that whenever I'm developing plugins, I need to sometimes make my own events, which is, that's a very useful thing to do whenever you're making a plugin, a more advanced plugin. So yeah, it's very cool. So we can make events that don't actually come with the um, the Spigot API so we can make our own events and then we can listen for those events so it's, it's pretty cool it allows you to do more things that you didn't think was possible so what I'm gonna do basically is show you how to make a custom event and then how to listen for it and all that stuff that I just told you and the next episode I'll be showing you how to use it in a more practical manner um, by showing you an example plugin we'll be making a plugin if you've ever heard of a plugin called silk spawners it's where that um, if you have a silk touch pickaxe you can basically silk touch a spawner and then it will give you that spawner in your inventory because without the plugin um, the spawner would just disappear okay so it basically allows, allows you to silk touch a spawner and get the spawner okay so anyway we're just gonna make a plugin like that next episode so I hope you're excited for that and we're gonna be using custom events in that plugin because they're gonna be very useful so anyway I just wanted to keep you updated on what we're gonna do so let's get right into it this is how you make a custom event so the first thing we want to do is get some packages made here so we can have some order in our plugin um, here so usually we name our package uh, events and this is usually going to be the package that we hold our you know events our listeners right so we can listen for events in this package usually but now that we're making our but now that we're making our own events this isn't really what we want to name it we want to have a package called listeners for where we want to listen okay so this would be the package that we're now going to use for listening for events okay but this is going to be the package that we make our own events inside of okay so just to be clear that's what we're going to do so you don't get confused here you'll see in a second when i actually make the listener in the event so you'll see the difference okay so let's go ahead and try making a custom event so to make a custom event all you got to do is make a new class here and let's give it a name so we'll call it game end event so this event will be basically called whenever the game ends okay just pretend like we're making a plugin where or we have, it's like a mini game plugin, right? So you might want to have a game end event inside of a mini game plugin. So whenever the game ends, you can call this event, and then you can listen for this event, and then you can you know just transfer data and just do a bunch of stuff, right? So once you make this class, if you want to make it into a custom event, all you gotta do is extends events. And before you import, you know from wherever you want to import it from, make sure you're importing from the org.bucket.event uh, package here, okay? So make sure you import, uh, import from that. And then now we can put the stuff that we need to put inside of here, okay? So you actually have to put a few things before you start coding, um, you know, in your custom event. You have to put some stuff here. So if you go to this link here, I'll leave it in the description for you. It's just basically a wiki page where you can find some information on making events. So if you go down to the custom event section, it'll tell you exactly what you need to have. Every custom event needs to have one of these. You just copy and paste this in here, custom events, paste it in there. And there you go, okay? So then in between that, you can put your code for your event. Just make sure you import everything, of course, for handler list. And this is basically just the methods that will help your um, event be handled, okay? So don't really worry about those. Just leave them how they are. Just make sure you have them, okay? So now inside of here, we can create some variables for our event. So what we need to do is think about what type of stuff does our event need to represent. So we're ending a game. So this event will be called whenever the game is ended. So we want to basically have some information. So usually when you have an event, right? Like, for example... Um, bed a leave event like player bed leave event I believe that's one of the events something like that um, usually you can do E you know stands for event dot get player you can get the player you can get the bed you can get any information like that so we want to be able to get information from this custom event so to get information from this event we need to store information right so let's think about some of the things that we can store so if it's a game we want to store the winner and the loser right so we can just go ahead and make some objects here for winner so player winner and don't initialize them they'll be initialized in the constructor so whenever we construct the event or create the event that's where we initialize it so player winner and then player loser okay so these are two objects that are going to store the objects for our winner and our loser so we're gonna pass in the winner and the loser when we call the event and you'll see how that works in a second it's really cool actually so now let's let's add another one just for example's sake we'll do int final score okay like that okay so you can have as many things as you want inside of here you can have any type of object that you want to have you can have player you can have box you can have anything really it doesn't really matter it's your own event you can do whatever you want right so that's what I'm gonna have in my event so now that we have that what we want to do is create the constructor for this event so whenever we create the event, we need a constructor to initialize everything. So we can do public game end event. And if you don't know how classes and, and constructors work and all that fun stuff, you might you might want to go back and watch my Java series. I explain how to do object oriented programming there. 
So it's good to know all that. You need to know all that for this type of advanced spigot coding. So anyway, so public game event, and then we just pass in the parameters. So we'll do player winner, and then player loser, and then finally int final score, like that. And then now we can just do this. So this dot winner is equal to winner, and this dot loser is equal to loser. And then finally final score. Oop, nope. This dot final score is equal to final score. Okay. And so of course this dot winner is going to represent this winner here, but then winner without the this in front of it is going to represent the winner from the parameter, okay? Pretty simple. So what this is going to do is now um, allow us to initialize the values for our event when we create it, like I said, 20 times now. So one more thing that we need so we can get this information once the event is already created and we listen for it, we need to make some getters here so we can get the information. So code to generate and then getter and then just hold control and then select all three of these or however many, you know, you know, things that you have here, um, data types or objects. So just select all of them and click OK. And what that's going to do is create the code for the getters. So you'll see how we use these in a second. So that's pretty much it. That's how we make our event here. Um, if you want to, you could also uh, make it cancelable. So like I said, I'll leave the link in the description if you want to see how to do that. But you can add this method here and then it's going to allow you to cancel the method or both of these. So in case you want to do that. But anyway, um, we're just going to keep it simple. Um, so custom events, let's go back to our program here. There we go. So now that we created our event, we can now listen for it. So we can create a listener here. And so this is going to be the thing that listens for the event, the thing that um, is basically the piece of code that is run whenever the event happens, basically, right? You know this from you know regular events from Spigot. So name, we'll just call this um, game listeners. Because the way I like to do is um, any custom events, I like to listen for all of the custom events in the same class. You don't really have to do that, but if you want to, you can do that. So I just listen for all the custom events in this class whenever I'm working on a plugin like that. Um, so game listeners implements, and then of course we're going to implement, uh, implement listener. So this is just what we've been doing in the past few episodes, and we're just simply listening for an event. So if you want to listen for our custom event that we have here, we can simply do, like we did before, event handler, public void, and let's give it a name on game end and then now we just pass in the event as the parameter game end event e so now we can get information watch this we can do e dot and then we can get the winner the loser and the final score because we created these um getters here right so we can get the information and since we have getters here we want to make these private okay that just makes more sense you don't really have to but it's usually what you want to do when you have it um like that encapsulated so um, yeah, that's what we do here. So now we're getting, or we're listening for the event. And so every time this event runs, we want to do something. So let's see what we want to do. Let's go ahead and announce that the event has happened, or that the game has ended, because you know this event is being called only when the game ends. So let's announce that, and then let's also announce the results of the game. So like who won the game and who lost the game, right? So let's do that. So we'll do, um, let's do e dot. I know we'll just broadcast it so everyone can know what happened. So bucket server dot broadcast message and we'll say game has ended okay bucket get server dot broadcast message winner and we'll do e dot get winner dot get name just like that really simple and then after that we'll just well we need a plus here okay so we'll just copy this paste it okay so then we'll do loser because we also want to tell the people who lost the game right there we go. So that's what that's going to do. Basically, whenever the game events, event is called, whenever the game ends, it's just going to run this here, and then it's going to announce what happened, right? Pretty simple. First, we actually need to um, register our, our listener, right? So we always have to do that. Um, so to do that, we can do bucket dot get plugin manager or get server dot get plugin manager dot uh, register events, and then we can just do new game listeners. And then we just put this, just like that, okay? That's just us registering the event. We've done that a million times. Or the the event listener, excuse me. These are different, you know? So event and listener are to totally different things. Listeners listen for the event, and then events is where we have our events, right? So anyway, um, now that we have our event and we're listening for it, we need to actually make the event. When is the event going to happen, right? So um, there's many different situations you can call this event. Um, but we're just going to create a command here that um, every time we run this command, the event is going to be called. Because that's just the simplest way I can demonstrate to you how to call an event, or yeah, call a custom event. So let's just make a command here. We'll call it game over command. 
So whoever runs this command will basically end the game. Okay, it's just going to be a simple example command that allows us to demonstrate the custom event, how to do it. Like I said, so we'll do public on command return true. Okay, let's add our basic stuff here. So sender. And then if, um, so what we want to do basically is have it so that whoever runs this command also needs to provide an argument, which is going to be the second player's name. And so the argument that they provide is going to be the loser of the game. And then whoever runs the command is going to be the winner of the game. So it's just a simple way for us to get a winner and a loser so that we can print out the results of a game ending. Okay, so we'll do that. So we'll do if args.length is equal to one. So that stands for having one argument. So then we could just do, um, well now we can call the event ending, right? So we can um, end the game, right? So to call a custom event, we could simply do bucket dot get server dot get plugin manager call event. And then inside of here, we just pass in the event class for that event. So, so all we gotta do is do new and then the name of our class here. So new game end event. And that's all we gotta do. And then of course also we need a parameter. So control P if that went away. And then of course we provide our winner, our loser, and our final score. See, that's how we get the information passed to the listener, right? So our winner is going to be the person who ran the command, like I said. So we can simply do, oh, well, we need an instance of the person, right? So we could do player player is equal is equal to player sender like that. And then also we need we need a uh, instance of the person who has been targeted, the person who's in the argument. So we could do player target is equal to player or no we don't have to have player here we could do simply um what's it called bucket so it gets get player and then we just pass in the name from the argument so args zero so that's gonna be the first argument we know how to do this hopefully if you don't know how to do this just watch my other episodes so anyway now we can pass in the information to the event so we could do player that's gonna be the winner so control p by the way to see the parameters again so player and then we need a loser so that's gonna be our target and then the final score, we can just put a random number. It doesn't really matter. So, yeah, this is the most important part here, you know, in terms of what we're doing in this command here. Um, this is going to be how you call a custom event. So don't forget how to do this. And if you forget how to do any of this, by the way, just go ahead and look in the description of this video. You'll see all the code from today's episode, and you can bookmark the code for future reference. In case you ever forget, you can come back to it and then see how I did it. And just copy and paste it if you need to or whatever, anything like that, okay? So just make sure you do that. But anyway, this is how you make an event or call the event, excuse me. So now what we need to do is register this command in the um, in the main um, what's it called main class here, and then we can go ahead and test it out. Okay, so we can do git command. Let's give it a name. We'll say game over, um, and then set executor new game over command. There we go. Really simple process here. So now let's go ahead and um, also add it to our plugin.yml. Never forget that. So commands game over description in the game with a loser with a winner and a, and a loser okay okay so this is really simple just to recap what we did before we test it out we created a custom event here um, and all we had to do was um, add these two methods here or well yeah these two methods and then we had to add this little thing here this um, object basically and so after that we can add our custom stuff here so which, which is going to be our variables that we're going to store information with and then we have our custom constructor here and then finally we have the getter so we can get the information whenever we need to and then finally after that we made our custom listener here which is basically just going to listen for our custom event and then whenever our event happens whenever our event is triggered this will run here basically okay and after that we just made a little command here just to test it out and show you how to to demonstrate how to call a custom event okay so hopefully that makes sense for you. So let's test it out now. I'm going to run all this and I'll see you in my server. Okay, by the way, I forgot to tell you. Um, I forgot to fix this actually. And I just had the problem right now. Um, it's unable to compile the Maven, um, you know, the project into the plugin because there's something wrong with our, let's, let me scroll up here. Um, let me find it. It says fatal error compiling invalid target. So the reason that is, is because in our prom.xml, it has the wrong version here. So if you scroll down, we can see that source has a slash in front of it. So keep the, the dollar sign, but get, get rid of this last year. And the reason that is happening for all of your new plugins every time we create a new plugin is because um, there's something wrong with the plugin that we're using to create these plugins. So if, if you remember in the beginning of the series, I had you install the, the IntelliJ Minecraft plugin to easily create plugins here. So there's something wrong with that plugin. So it's making this little problem within your prom to XML, okay? 
So anyway, um, just fix that every time, you know, that happens every time you make a new project for now. And then hopefully the person who created the IntelliJ plugin will fix it for us. So just make sure you fix that if you're having these problems like I just had had here. So now I can run this and it should compile without any problems here. So now I'll see you in the server. All right, guys, so I'm on the server now so we can test our plugin out. Um, if we do slash PL, we can see the, that the plugin is loaded onto the server. So the first thing we want to do is try running the command. Obviously, that's all we got to do, really. So we do game over, and then the second parameter is going to be, or the first parameter in this case, is going to be the loser, right? So the winner is going to be the person running the command, or my Illuminati account, and then the loser is going to be Rise Power 90, my other account, okay? So let's run this, and now it says game has ended, winner Illuminati, loser Rise Power 90. So as you can see, it worked perfectly. We were able to um, listen for the events, and it successfully was able to find the winner and then find the loser from the command and just all of that fit together perfectly so hopefully you like that that's how you make a custom event it's actually surprisingly simple um again i'll leave the link for the event um that that little page i showed you a second ago i'll leave the link for that in the description below in case well that's what i use to you know get the methods that we need to paste into our custom event so i'll leave that there for you and make sure you bookmark that as well but yeah like i said in the next episode we'll be working on a custom plugin where we can basically do a bunch of stuff with spawners and then we'll be showing you an example of um, a custom event, okay? So stay tuned for that. So anyway, if you have any questions about what I did today, you can ask in the comment section below or you can join our Discord server. There's a Discord link in, in the description below, so you can make sure you do that. Um, I would prefer that you do that instead of use the comment section, actually, because it's easier for me and my friends to actually help you out with, the, with their coding problems and stuff like that. So just do that. Um, and then also, like I said, all the code from today's episode is going to be in the description below. So make sure you click the link and then join it or save it. And that's pretty much it. So if you like this video, leave a like. If you want to see more, subscribe and peace.